With Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 250 somewhere in Jujutsu Heaven, Satoru Gojo is looking down with a smile on his face about that reverse Uno card that has just been played by his students, Yuji and Yuda, as they flip the table on Sukuna at the last second. Sukuna once told Gojo this wasn't a one-on-one -on -one fight during the epic showdown, and now during this fight, Sukuna finds himself in a three versus one handicap matchup. Sukuna versus Yuji versus Yuda, and Rika, the Queen of the Curses, all battling against him. As you would expect, even Sukuna finds himself with a bit of difficulty at times during this battle and the fact that Yuta just hit Sukuna with that last move that he never expected someone to ever use on him is absolutely priceless however let's back things up a bit and let's get into review itself because we have a lot to unpack here because to put it lightly this chapter was just straight gas we open up the chapter with the narrator giving us some very much needed context about how Yuta Okotsu's domain expansion works and for the most part it's exactly as we theorized last Last week when we first saw him use it. In short, all those curse techniques that Yuta copy, he's able to use any of them to select as his domain expansion surehead effect, which given the types of techniques that he's copied, that's already a dangerous domain expansion to deal with. However, there is one drawback to his domain expansion, which is that his remaining curse techniques that he's copied are all scattered around the battlefield in various katanas, so he doesn't actually know which curse technique is in which sort that he picks up. In all honesty, given Given how overpowered this domain expansion is, it makes sense that he has a similar bit of luck when it comes to his domain expansion reaching its peak efficiency, the same way that Hakari's domain expansion relies on a bit of luck as well in order for him to hit the jackpot. I can see why there might be people upset about this, but I personally think it's the right move given how overpowered it is. So we have the chapter then show us Yuta unleashing a barrage of attacks at Sukuna, all while Yuji tries to go in on Sukuna from the opposite side, and we see that despite the deck being stacked against him, Sukuna isn't too phased by the numbers being against him. Even when Rika tries to attack him from the sky, while Yuji and Yuta are fighting him on opposite sides, Yuji up close and Yuta from a distance, essentially trying to box Sukuna in, enforcement to making a mistake, Sukuna begins to break down their moves right away once he gets hit by the invisible attack that slashes up his body. And this one is pretty huge because that's the ability of Drew, one of Okotsu's opponents that we saw in the Culling game. So so it's actually pretty interesting to think this whole time that Yuda was fighting against people in the calling game. He was collecting cursed techniques via copy, the same way you collect Pokemon gym badges. However, Yuda and Yuji know exactly who it is they're dealing with, and they aren't allowing Sukuna the opportunity to breathe. Instead, Okotsu continues to pressure Sukuna by attacking from the air, and as Sukuna smiles, he confirms something that we've been saying here on the channel for the last few weeks. Sukuna is exhausted from all of those high-level fights back to back to back that he had to engage in prior to to this fight. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gojo in a battle that was so insane that it basically used every aspect of the power system of Jujutsu Kaisen and was filled with countless twists and turns around the way that these two seesawed back and forth and duked it out like two prize fighters swinging for that championship belt. Just the Gojo fight itself is enough to have Sukuna be pushed to his limit because Gojo's domain expansion was frying this dude's brain a few different times. Those back-to-back -back domain clashes, that's not not something that you just recover from right away. Then you had Sukuna have his one-on-one -on -one fight with Kashimo, someone who, even though he didn't fight against Sukuna for a long time, he still got him to use his Hiei and Arrow form and use the curse tool that Yorozu made for him and got Sukuna to expend even more curse energy. Then you had the duo Higuruma and Yuji, who pushed him even further in battle. And Higuruma, while he did die, he did manage to confiscate the curse tool that Yorozu made for him. Each battle that Sukuna's been in, there's been a little bit taken off of him. And Sukuna admits it while confirming that Yuta has also copied Angel's curse technique as well. In short, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to take down Sukuna. He also can expand his domain. And though it's coming back like Okotsu said in the last chapter, his reverse curse technique, it isn't at 100% right now, which is another thing that they have going in their favor. And his curse energy output has dropped to a level that is comparable to Yuji and Yuta. And if that isn't bad enough, due to using Hollow Wicker, he can't use Dismantle the way that he wants to. This is a very complicated and late 
layered strategy by Angel to take down Sukuna. Jesus did it have a lot of ton of moving pieces to it. Absolutely. But this looks like it might be the right path right here because they're pressuring Sukuna with more attacks as things go on. You got Rika literally throwing Yuji towards Sukuna to try and hit him with a Drew McIntyre Claymore finisher. And Okotsu is trying to slice this man up from the side with one of his swords. Sukuna, due to keeping two hands tied up using his hollow wicker, he can't use his other two hands. Even worse with Sukuna, he's aware of what Yuji is trying to do because they used to share the same body. He knows that Yuji is purposely trying to use those attacks to hit the barrier between himself and Megami, all so he can break Megami free via the soul disruption. And Sukuna tells us that each hit by Yuji, while it doesn't do a ton of damage, it does enough damage. His curse energy output lowers with every hit and the barrier between himself and Fushiguro thins away and he knows that when that happens they're going to use Jacob's ladder to destroy the tool that is within Megami. He sees a strategy coming right away. It's then that we see that Sukuna is thinking about taking out the more troublesome of the two Yuji since Yuji's attacks present the most danger to his control over Megami Fushiguro and just when Sukuna is about to grab hold of Yuji and use his curse technique at point blank range to chop him up, Yuta comes comes in close using Inomaki's cursed speech technique to make Sukuna stay still. Which that goes back to the first time that Yuta saw Inumaki use the ability and Jujutsu Kaisen Volume Zero, where they're fighting that cursed spirit at the mall, and then he busted out the move against Suguru Ghetto during the Okotsu versus Ghetto fight. The only issue that I take with this is that if Angel knew all this stuff about Yuta and layered together this big brain plan, wouldn't it have been smarter to have Yuta replace Yuji in that Higuruma battle? I would actually think so. Yuta could have told. Sukuna don't move and Higuruma could hit him with the Executioner's Blade and it all be over. Even if you make it a four versus one in that scenario, Sukuna versus Higuruma and Yuji and Rika and Yuta, then they might have been able to actually pull it off. That would buy time for them to go after Kenjaku afterwards, but then again, you run into the issue of Maki being potentially used to go after Kenjaku. She couldn't take on that horde of cursed spirits that Yuta and Rika took down after Kenjaku got his head taken off. I don't hate this reveal it raises questions at first but the story is actually layered out the answers for you prior to this information being shown to so it makes sense when you think about it the fight then shifts over to sukuna in this one moment when both attempted to use his curse technique on yuji and then later on uses cleave on yuji and yuda he just gave yuda a dangerous weapon because yuda's curse technique is copied we then see yuda unleash thin icebreaker onto Sukuna and tee him up for Rika to slam into Sukuna, all while Yuji and Yuta continue raising forward with the clear goal to continue the intensity being raised up on them and push Sukuna as far as the bodies will allow them to do. However, just when they start to get close, Sukuna fires off Cleave and sends the duo flying backwards, and now Sukuna gets the chance to go on the offensive. After a brief exchange, we see Sukuna continue to think over everything and comes to realization that during that one month of training, the Jujutsu High students have prepared for this exact moment and he's coming to the realization that he might have underestimated Yuji and Yuta which at this point if we learn that Yuji somehow learned domain expansion I say don't be shocked. This leads to a hilarious response from Yuji and Yuta when Sukuna asks what have they been up to for last month. Their answers are pretty much reflection of their personalities. Yuji says hey we've been working really hard because that's more so in line with Yuji's character. He puts his nose to the grindstone. He puts the work in. Yuta on the other hand says that they cheated it, and you know that was because of his curse technique copy this dude basically spent the whole month copying curse techniques for this exact moment and that's what makes that moment where yuda uses charles curse technique on sakuna which charles as a reminder is the guy who could draw the manga panels and when he got the blood of his enemies he could see into the future for a few seconds that's the fight that we saw with charles versus hockery as a reminder this is gonna look really amazing whenever this fight gets animated because yuda is in his bag during this fight as a heavy lifter while yuji is also hitting sakuna with basically body shots that are meant to slowly break fushiguro free playing the long game the same way that a boxer plays the long game by focusing on kidney shots to wear down the enemy over time however the introspection in this chapter isn't just limited to sakuna in this chapter because 
both Okotsu and Itadori both come to the realization that they have to take advantage of Sukuna being so weakened right now because if they don't, nobody else stands a chance. They have to take him down now because they can't imagine what Sukuna would do if he was allowed to continue to live and regain his strength that he lost after fighting so many battles. The duo then go forward with another volley of attacks against Sukuna and Sukuna realizes exactly what it is that Yuta's doing and so he starts going through his head, listing out the different possible techniques techniques that Okotsu has copied during this time and he drops a bombshell saying it might be possible he copied Gojo's Limitless and we all saw how much trouble that gave to Sukuna when he fought against Gojo and Sukuna briefly goes from worrying about that possibility to being relaxed because Yuta doesn't have six eyes so he shouldn't be able to control it however you guys have heard me say this a few times especially on my Naruto Explain channel that's a Chekhov's gun that's either going to be used as a misdirection or as potential foreshadowing we're going to have to keep our eyes on Yuta moving forward because as we got told in Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 0, Yuta and Gojo are related. So this does feel like a Chekhov's gun the more that I think about it. Gojo wasn't written as saying that they're distant relatives for nothing in the same with Sukuna wondering if Yuta has limitless. The chapter ends off with Yuta closing the distance and proving that he is the one that Sukuna has to worry about because he hits Sukuna with cleave and it surprises Sukuna to see his own curse technique used on him. The only thing left now is the question of how Yuta's copy actually works, which I'm guessing we learn the answer to in the next chapter, probably from Sukuna putting the pieces together himself.